Dear friends, this is uh, you are welcome to another episode of webinar on Kaho platform. And this time we are discussing a very important topic of legal compliance in kidney transplantation. And I will like to pass it on and I will introduce you Dr. Badaraman, who is the Associate Professor of Department of Nephrology at Kilpoch Medical College, Chennai. And he will he is a very, very knowledgeable in this field. So over to you, Dr. Balaraman, for enlightening. Uh, good evening, friends, and uh, uh, good evening, uh, Dr. Vijay Agarwal, for bearing with me for all. I am a bit novice with this uh, mm -hmm. webinar. Uh, you had uh, uh, tolerated me for to a significant extent since morning. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for the great effort. Uh, today, uh, we will deal with the important uh, legal aspects of kidney transplantation. I am Dr. Balaraman. I am Associate Professor at uh, Skid Park Medical College, which is a yeah, government-based. I do transplant all, uh, in private sector as well, say for the past decade or so. So I will be talking the basically the HOTA, the Human Organ Transplant Act, as it applies to me, the practical aspects of it. Uh, so, since it is from an act, I have to quote verbatim from the act, but I will try to tell the meaning of it rather than the jargon of it. So, uh, it has been uh, reframed in the year 2014. It was originally passed in 1994, and it, uh, it has a gazette noti notification on uh, 27th March 2014. So the definitions are important. Uh, the act means the transplantation of human organ act. And uh, what we are interested in is that the word competent authority. Competent authority means the head of the institution. So the, in the entire act, it is mentioned competent authority. It means head of the institution or the hospital. Uh, Whereas authorization committee is different. And then any blood test has to be from a NABL accredited lab, National Accreditation Board of Testing and Calibration Laboratories. The appropriate authority, by appropriate authority, we mean in Tamil Nadu, we mean the director of medical, uh, uh, director of uh, um, medical services and not the medical education. So the appropriate authority here is the director of medical services. It is maintaining a panel of experts and this panel of experts are responsible for certifying the brain stem death. Yeah. I mean, there are four people who should certify. Out of these four people, two people should be empaneled actually uh, by the by empanelment authority. That is the director of medical services. Uh, and then the act further is quite crystal clear, especially in the 2014, it is quite crystal clear. It mentions the duties of registered medical practitioner, which uh, basically I think it, it says the nephrologist, it means the nephrologist while considering a cadaver transplant. So in some, it, it discusses both cadaver and live related side by side. So while considering cadaver transplant, uh, the person who is donating while during life, you should have signed the form seven or you should have expressed this intention of donating by way of driving license or so. If the donor did not authorize during life, then the person who is the near relative of the person who is in lawful possession of the body, you should be made aware of the option. So the act gives us permission. See, about say five years ago, 10 years ago, it was difficult for us when a patient is brain dead, brain dead, it is difficult for us to communicate to them that they can donate. That itself was a taboo. Now the act is clear that we should make the option in their near relative aware that the person is brain dead and then he can donate the organs. Uh, 
and then the uh, nephrologist should or the hospital authority should by way of the transplant coordinator he should inform the authorized human organ retrieval center see practically in tamil nadu what is happening is we can get the approval over phone we just send a mail we tell them that our icu is fairly equipped then our theater is fair, good we have this is n number of bedded hospital and then they give permission or a mail immediately they do permit and then we proceed on we, we do the organ harvesting in the same hospital but it so happened that for this purpose some of the brain the cadavers have been uh, say they are taken to another hospital transferred to another hospital for the organ retrieval purpose it has happened earlier so what actually happens is uh, the hospital which certifies gets some organs so the middleman is involved like and hence there is amendment a local amendment here is that if the brain stem death happens in hospital a and then the patient the cadaver is tra is uh, transported to hospital b the hospital b does not get the local rotation organ they are supposed to get to one kidney that they, they no longer get if the hospital is not routinely doing transplant even then the act applies even if the hospital is not registered they cannot escape by saying that they do not know the act for them also the same rules apply and then the act switches over to the live related one so before removing the organs before going for kidney transplantation what i should ensure is that the donor is in a proper state of physical and mental mentally he should be stable and then yeah physical it is easy but we should remember that the, the donor is not mentally challenged and if there is a doubt on that issue we should get a psychiatrist opinion if the donor is a near relative of the recipient then the competent authority himself can give the approval that is if the um, uh, uh, there is no need to go for the authorization committee and of course they need to uh, have certain uh, the act says that they should have the necessary document and the medical test uh, i'll come to it bit later uh, in case of the spouse of the donor there is a separate form so the competent authority that is the hospital owner or the medical director of the hospital is the competent authority uh, and not the nephrologist and not the urologist he should be knowing what is happening and he should have examined the documents if the donor is other than near relative please note that the competent authority is not empowered it is the authorization committee which comes into play the authorization committee should permit if the donor is not a near relative uh, if the donor or recipient is a foreign national then the competent authority cannot take decision on its on its own the authorization um, committee should approve and in minors it is very very exceptional we don't take organs from minors it is not only the committee even the committee is not permitted to allow the minors to donate organs it is appropriate authority that is the director of medical services and not only that the state government meaning the health permit a minor donating again uh, coming back to the cadaver okay there is a brain stem death what do i do and then i have informed to the uh, uh, authority organ retrieval team the consent of the near relative is essential in our country so laws are different in many countries in our country the consent of the near relative is a must even though i authorize my organ to be removed if i am found brain dead uh, without the consent of my near relative my organs cannot be removed uh, and then the brain death has to be certified by all the members of the board of the medical expert uh, if the neurosurgeon is not available then the anesthetist or intensivist who is not a part of the transplant team who is not a part of the transplant team can certify actually four people should certify two of them should be empaneled and what if the brain stem death is a mlc case if the brain stem death is a mlc case then a request should go to the police that is the station house officer or the superintendent of the police uh, who 
uh, and along with that a request should go to the post mortem doctor as well and we should be convinced and the post mortem doctor should be convinced that by retrieving the organs the determination of the cause of death is not jeopardized uh, and then while removing the organs we should note the state of the organs and then we, the same should be noted by the post mortem doctor as well ideally he should be present at the time of organ tissue organ or the tissue retrieval and there is a issue with respect to the post mortem so initially uh, there was a, a law stating that it should not be done beyond office timing that is it should be done during the bright daylight this act now clears that doubt it can be done even beyond office timing so that the body can be handed over to the relatives with the least inconvenience and who is the member of authorization committee the first point is that the medical practitioner who will be a part of organ transplantation team should not be a part of the authorization committee and then the authorization committee consider all requests but if the recipient is a foreign national and then the donor is a indian that is a indian donating to a foreign national is not accepted but i understand that there are so many of the nris so uh they are living outside so if they are near relative they still can donate if they are not near relative they cannot donate what is the purpose of the committee the committee sees that there is no commercial transaction so that is the basic idea of the committee is to make sure that there is no commercial transaction it should prepare a explanation of the link between them so what has happened for the donor to donate it should examine the reasons why the donor wishes to donate it should examine the link with the documentary evidence so that is it, further it clears that by way of examining the old photographs say for example about a 5 years ago 10 years ago so some uh, family get together would have been there where they would have assembled together so such photographs need to be examined the other main purpose of the committee is to make sure that there is no middleman involved and in the process uh, the committee should evaluate the financial status of the donor for the previous 3 years and there and if there is a gross discrepancy between the two then it is a decision of the authorization committee to permit or not to permit and then it should ensure that the donor is not a drug addict and the near relative of the donor say for example the spouse or the parent uh, they should be present around and they also should be so that they also know what the donor is doing this happens in unrelated cases and swab donation is allowed in this act because it has become the uh, it, it is quite active uh, swab transplant is helpful so the act gives provision for that also but note that the swab is not possible from other than near relative so swab can is possible only from a near relative to a near relative and not otherwise and normally it takes a week but in extraordinary situation the authorization committee can assemble even in less than a week and give a decision uh the removal and preservation of organs it is just uh, it has left to our common sense that uh, it is according to the current and accepted scientific methods the organ should be preserved in the accepted scientific method what happens to the cost once the brain stem death is certified one thing is clear that the cost shall not be borne by the donor family it can either be borne by the recipient or the institution or any government organization uh and then the application for living donor transplantation uh should be made to the competent authority or the authorization committee according to the situation and who uh i mean we look at the uh, composition of the committee uh, the committee can be state based or it, if the transplants is quite significant it can be from the district level as well say for example in tamil nadu we have one in chennai we have one in coimbatore and we have one in madurai and again the same rules that the no member from the transplant team will be a part of the uh, committee if the, the authorization committee can be hospital based so it appears easy isn't it the if the number of transplant is more than 25 then the, the authorization committee can be hospital based but there is a catch to it the hospital based committees uh the chairperson is the head of the institution 
there should be two senior medical practitioners that is no problem and then two persons on one of them preferably women of high integrity say high integrity uh, meaning that they can be judges that can be professors or members of uh, indian medical association like that but there should be one nominee or the health secretary that should be uh, i mean a nominee of the health secretary or the health secretary himself should be present during the authorization committee so this becomes difficult for the hospitals the district level authorization committee is again the same uh, the government hospital dean is the chairperson and again two registered medical practitioners are the members and two persons preferably one woman of high ranking should be one of the mem should be the members and then the health secretary or his nominee should be the member uh do we verify the residential status of the tassel um, of the donor yes we should if the donor belongs to or the recipient belongs to some other state so if the donor or the recipient belongs to some other state then a tassel dot certificate is essential and if discrepancy is found police has to be informed the police can be informed either by the nephrologist either by the transplant team or by the tahsildar or the any government official the quorum of authorization committee is not complete so there should at least be four of uh, uh, four person of whom are mentioned should be there during authorization committee so what does the authorization committee do it it circulates the copies initially itself to the members and then again if there is a discrepancy the concerned officer see that provides this the concerned officers of the state government can be uh, summoned to verify the facts some the police official asks and some tahsildar ask why should i certify the act actually says that they are involved if there is a doubt by the authorization committee the authorization committee is well within its powers to ask the police people to ask the revenue people to um, to certify or to verify and then come back again with another certificate Certificate. Now, who is a near relative? So, so far we have been talking about near relative. So, who is a near relative? So, the near relatives can be related genetically, or it can be spouse. So, initially it was mother, father, brother, sister, son, and daughter, and now the grandmother and grandfather also have been included. Uh, and then the competent authority has to. Uh, certify that they are near relatives then and mind that the computer authority is neither the nephrologist nor the urologist but the hospital in charge and then what does the computer authority do or the authorization committee do they seek for documentary evidence of relationship so which can be in the form of a aadhar card a photo identity card the second thing they do is they look at the identity and the residence so if it is one and the same then it is fine suppose see the act is very clear in this so it is it is looking only for documentary evidence of the relationship if in the opinion of the competent authority the relationship is not conclusively established with the documents available then the dna profiling can be asked but in practice we are worried about our the uh, our documents so which can be just goofed up and hence for in practice we all depend on at least a basic hla if not a dna profiling and and then this dna profiling should come from a nabl laboratory say for example the father and mother they will have the uh, the document the genetic relationship it can easily be established but between siblings it may be difficult so in such situations we need to examine the parents so if a is willing to donate and then the a's parents are examined and b claims to be the sibling And that the genetic relationship is not proved, then the B's parents also has the same, isn't it? So it can be proved roundabout by examining the parents. If the genetic relationship, if, if I mean, when we have done this, and then we don't have any um, evidence for the genetic relationship between the donor and recipient, then this will be deemed to have not been established. So this is important in case of. a discrepancy that can happen even 5 years down the line or 10 years down the line so in case of spousal donor the fact that they are married should be known to the competent authority meaning that not the authorization committee it can be to the hospital owner 
the uh, marriage certificate should be examined the marriage photograph should be examined and then the birth certificate of the children so that is a valid evidence so the initial thing that look is the duration of the marriage the second thing they look at is the the proof of residence and the photo identity and then again the medical practitioner is not a part of competent authority so he is not the competent authority at all the urologist or the nephrologist so if it is other than near relative mind that it is not the competent authority who comes to the picture so it is the authorization committee of the hospital and uh, in case of foreigners even though they are near relatives authorization committee only can um, give the approval the embassy has to certify the relationship and again it has been stressed that a yeah, indian cannot donate to a foreigner if it is if he is not a relative and then the uh, the donor has to be personally interviewed see sometimes we feel it is too much that they keep asking for uh, such great evidences like who is the, you are uh, so the authorization committee ask for a near relative of the donor and then they say bring the evidence that he is near relative so sometimes the assessor says i cannot certify i cannot keep on certifying but the act clearly says that it, the donor has to be personally interviewed though the recipient need not be personally interviewed but for in practical sense the recipient also is being interviewed and in case of women donor it is obvious that more precaution has to be taken and then a independent consent of a near of another near relative has to be taken that this woman is donating this lady is donating and then the authorization committee should give in writing its reason for rejecting or for approving in a standard format that is prescribed by the act and then if further tests are required so it is not that we finish off all the tests and then send we can do the basic test and then further test can be done say for example we can withhold the angiogram and once the committee clears we can go for the angiogram but practically if the angiogram says something later then all this trouble is not worth it and so basically we finish off the medical test before sending to the committee uh and then the mental evaluation is being stressed physical is okay it's quite easy and understandable suppose if the uh, donor is mentally retarded then a psychiatrist should be um, uh, a mental illness is a contraindication for transplantation say for example major psychosis schizophrenia is a contraindication for transplantation but still the uh, psychiatrist gives a points that there is the insight good insight into what he is doing a mentally challenged person it is his own right to donate to his kith and kin so we should look at it from that angle as well and then now there is no option all interviews has to be video recorded uh and then once this is done the uh, within 24 hours the it has to be displayed in the website and then the authorized transplantation center everyone should have should have its own website and it should reflect on it and then in the notice board so whether it is permitted or rejected and the reasons has to be displayed with the identity hidden with the donor's identity hidden and then what about registration of the hospital yeah registration of the hospital uh, we, the act says that they should pay rupees 10000 to the appropriate authority the appropriate authority after holding a inquiry so practically they employ they uh, form a team of nephrologist and urologist and anesthetist basically and then find out whether, whether everything is in proper order and now what is being stressed is the transplant coordinator so there should be a website there should be a transplant coordinator uh, which becomes mandatory by the act and the renewal of registration the procedure is the same only thing is uh, rupees 5000 is the fees that is prescribed and then the team has to be uh, has to inspect whatever has done in the past 5 years so whether the transplants have gone in order so no hospital shall be granted a certificate without the following 24 hours availability of medical and surgical staff nursing staff intensive care specialist and anesthetist and blood bank but luckily this is a blood bank is not a must, but it can be a access it can be outsourced and 24 hour availability of operation theater and a communication six system and andrology neurology pediatrics and cardiology and one medical expert 
for the tissue transplant. I think it means nephrologist. And then the HLA matching facility need not be in house. It can be an outsourced one as well. And then equipments is according to the scientific and ac accepted uh, norms. So there is no specification on the equipments. With respect to kidney transplantation, there should be a MS general surgery or a equivalent qualification with three years post MS training in a recognized transplant center in India or and having attended to an adequate number of renal transplantation as an active member of team. So practically whenever there is a MCH, we, when we go for inspection, we do approve. But especially, uh, say there can be older urologists who when they did their urology or whatever training they had, there was not a MCH at all. So some senior urologists are there who find this to be very difficult. So when we ask for a yeah, certificate or when we ask for a evidence to say that they have worked in a renal transplantation team, they get offended. They say, see, boss, we have uh, taught uh, transplantation to you. We have tra taught transplantation to the entire um, Chennai. How can you ask me a certificate? So it becomes very difficult for us to convince that see, we are not empowered to do that without this. So uh, practically whenever there is a MCH, it becomes simple. And then the retrieval center, that is the organ retrieval center, not the transplant center. All you need to have is intensive care facility and then other paraphernalia, basically the infrastructure and equipment, which I assume it to be the ventilators as well as the operation theater. It should have linkages with the nearby government. Suppose if there is an MLC case, they should be able to do the postmortem at the right time. And then this is just common sense. Uh, the donor screening has to be done. Uh, be it the live related, be it the uh, cadaver, where the serology has to be checked. They should, the brain stem death patient should not be having any communicable disease. And then the laboratory test should be available. And then it should have been done. And then the procurement should be done in the standard uh, uh, procedure, like procurement, processing and sterilization. All this are the responsibility of the organ retrieval center, packaging, labeling. And then distribution and allocation is the responsibility of the uh, of the network. Uh, and then if there is any serious adversary actions, and the, all this have to be documented from the time of the retrieval to whom they had given at what time. Um, so everything has to be documented. But the donor uh, I mean, has to be the identity has to be protected. It's confident and has to be respected. So we do reveal the donor identity to anybody. And then all this should be in place, the quality management. So this is just the quality management. And then the act goes on to say that the role of the transplant coordinator, the transplant coordinator, who is a transplant coordinator? He is a graduate of any recognized system of medicine or he can be a nurse, he can be a bachelor degree in psychiatry or sociology and he should have gone he, he should be inducted for training in counseling and in the in the grief counseling uh, so in a transplant coordinator is a must if the hospital is to do transplant and uh, i'm not going into detail of this this is for the appropriate authority there should be an advisory committee so what does the network do so the network, again, there shall be a regional and a state level. There should be an apex national networking organization, which is in place now. But practically, uh, what is happening is the state level and the regional network is the one that is operational, which distributes organ in Tamil Nadu. Uh, if I want to get a uh, cadaver, a kidney, I need to register through a transplant center, but only one center. Who, who shall allocate the registration number, which shall remain same even if the patient changes the hospital. So all we need to know, uh, do is register in one center and I am at my liberty to change to some other hospital. So why this happens is normally is that the cadaver uh, generating hospital uh, is allotted one kidney straight away. And so if I am in a hospital which keeps on certifying cadavers, then I have got two chances to get the kidney. So it is always better to get registered in a place where the organ or the brain is happening. So how do they distribute? So 
all recipients to be listed for our uh, for the organs and the priority is that those who do not have any suitable living donor among near relatives those who have suitable living donor those who have suitable living donor and who also have not donate come third in the list so we have to the organ the, the networking organization has to allot in this model i am not sure whether this is uh, ethical see if my brother of my, my sister has uh, a kidney failure then um, um, i become i should donate i should always donate is it i am uh, at my liberty to donate or not to donate uh, but currently the act says that the uh, the order of preference in allotting the organ is in this order the networking organization shall coordinate retrieve storage transport match and then transplant the organs so network organization shall coordinate and then they are supposed to maintain the say, say for example the noto or the uh, regional network should maintain a organ donation registry so i had um, uh, slightly uh, i thought all this are just common sense or not much relevant so i have uh, just skipped to those and then any person who is aggrieved by the authorization committee so he feels that he is unfairly um, rejected or so he can appeal uh, within 15 days within 30 i'm sorry within 30 days from the receipt of the order uh, so with this my close i would like to thank uh, the listeners my colleagues my friends and especially dr vijay agarwal who has given me this wonderful opportunity to interact with you i am here for any questions and interaction sir uh thank you thank you dr balaraman and uh, just one second so uh, we are i think very very thankful to you for making things i think very clear uh, it was very lucid presentation and we will have now some questions yeah definitely now uh, so one of the things that uh, also came about that some of these things may be different from different states do you think that these laws are like totally central in nature or they differ in state like one of the uh, it is different sir that is the uh, even the act itself says that they are likely to have minor variations there is some uh, allowance given where the forms can be merged the forms can be yes it's most of the uh, indian states i think yes so uh, like for example in kerala the uh, amount to be charged for the hospital registration is 12500 rupees instead of 10000 rupees for example yeah 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 okay and okay okay and uh, has said that now uh, what i what i think we would like to do through our participants is to therefore uh, try to compile the differences on the legal compliances in various states so maybe you know you can help us in making like a checklist that yes, are the essential components of the legal compliances and how is it differing from state to state is what we can try and do so we will try to uh, circulate this and ask people to see that uh, so that we have a comprehensive view of uh, things second is that uh, you know the the question was that can you have a storage blood bank instead of a proper blood bank the act is clear that uh, uh, there has to be a blood bank but not necessarily within our premise it yeah. can be uh, a outsourced one all people do is uh, see one of them are arguing that say in a very big campus like madras medical college Yeah. the place where uh, the wow surgeon has to go, move from one corner to another corner is more farther the blood bank is next to my hospital yeah. so and then so this this type of outsourcing is acceptable according to the act the act does not talk about blood storage facility but yeah. i understand that certain teams of the see it all depends on the team which goes for inspection so the team certain team means uh, are uh, insisting on the blood storage facility at least okay now the another question is uh, 
that as per the act can swap be authorized by the hospital based authorization committee if both the pairs are from the same state no no the the, the uh, act says uh, authorization committee not written authority the swap swap has to be done by the authorization committee by the authorization committee which is the district or the state authorization committee ah district of this um, uh, Okay. I mean, it can be any authorization committee. It it, uh, it is not necessarily that uh, it should be the state. It can be district authorization committee as well. Right, right. So, uh, and where can we get copies of the uh, THOA acts? Where can we get the copy of the acts? Uh, so it is. Uh, it is. Online, sir. It is online. So uh, I am just reading that uh, swap again. The authorization committee of the hospital or the district. Basically, if it is the the word is the authorization committee and not the competent authority. Yeah. yeah. So the swap That's has right. to be done from the committee. I think that is was... available online in the noto uh, in the website. It is easily available, sir. Okay. Is it mandatory to put a lawyer in the authorization committee? uh the it doesn't say so it, there are two members of a, a good um, uh, say of good caliber that's what it says judge it never says uh, lawyer judge it has included judge retired judge or judge sitting judge so for international patients the yes, high sir. commission issues uh, nocs with the following sentence uh, that the mission does not undertake any responsibility with respect to medical financial or other legal matters involved in the operation how do we proceed in such cases no once the authorization committee gives permission yes. so whatever uh, they had uh, given as addendum or in small print yeah i think it is not legally valid yeah. the embassy should give a certificate stating that this is so and so is the relative of the individual and the authorization committee should look into it yeah. uh, and if the authorization committee is satisfied and then it should give us the permission see further whether the uh, foreign national pays or just he escapes and if he lands up in complication what happens that is not pertaining to the authorization committee but the legality of the transplantation is there it stands yeah so are there any transplant coordinator courses or training in government side no there is no such course in government side but uh, the mohan foundation there are certain private uh, uh, the mohan foundation dr sunil sharaf uh, who is heading it who is doing um, certain course and then is training them yeah. is very helpful if we are a live transplant hospital with a license for the same then are we eligible as a organ retrieval center Yes, sir. yes. Sir. The organ, the when the transplant, when the center is approved for transplantation. Yes, yes, but they don't get the organ. Yes, right away, we are a organ retrieval center. Yes, but they cannot just claim the same organ uh, immediately. Ah, uh, this goes according to the local um, whatever the practices. But normally, with respect to kidney, they get to one kidney, and they cannot give it to 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 X. Actually, they should go according to the list, hmm. and then say, for example, one person will be waiting list waiting list number eight. The other patient will be waiting list number twenty. So they need to justify justify why they had skipped this waiting list number eight fellow, and then given to twenty. is it necessary to have a separate website for kidney transplant or no need no need it is only the website of the uh, hospital uh, hospital that's that will do yeah if it is included there then uh, it needs a checklist for the legal process for spousal kidney donor this all has been made i think very clear so this presentation people are asking uh, about this. this will be uploaded on the resource center of of kaho so in a uh, weeks time or so it will be available uh, yes sir. in the resource center in the webinar section so one can go and listen to this webinar uh, again uh, what should be the contents of the website is somebody is asking no it is uh, <laughs> well uh, your presentation i think it should uh, hota the human organ transplant act discussion on human tra organ transplant act can be a right uh, 
Yeah. So the idea is that you are just trying to make it public that who who's uh, who is the donor and who is the recipient and what yeah. kidney, what kidney transplant cases you are doing. This is to be made public. Yeah. Uh, what is the role of HLA typing in uh, in uh, in relation to kidney transplant by local authorization committee? Yeah. The uh, See, the act is very clearly saying that the HLA care should be done only when the documentary evidence is not forthcoming or there is a doubt with the documentary evidence like the other card, like the ration card or the Tashla certificate. But practically people are afraid that somebody can question them later and so they depend on the HLA as well. But the act does not insist on the HLA for routine father, mother and all that. In say, for example, in certain government, government hospitals, when the HLA is not being done, they apply to the authorization yeah. committee without the HLA. Yes, uh, then somebody is, is it mandatory that only the nephrologist should certify the prospective donor is fit to donate kidney or any doctor can? Any doctor, the registered medical practitioner. So that is why they are clear on that, the word, the registered medical practitioner. Uh, so, who can be the chairperson of the authorization committee, medical or non-medical? Uh, the chairperson is the uh, the government college dean. That is what it says. The government college dean, the nearby government college dean, is the chairperson. Yeah, because the authorization committee, which is being made by the government, hmm. uh, will be the district commissioner, whatever the district committee they will be making it. And he is talking about probably the. Uh, competent authority is the owner of the hospital, as you say. Ah, medical director in charge or the owner of the hospital. Then uh, there is information from a friend that uh, you can download the act and some of the information from the Mohan Foundation website also. Ah, yes, sir. Mohan Foundation is very active in all this and then they are helpful. Is there any legal implication if the donor and recipient details are not mentioned in hospital website? Uh, well, I don't know that, but uh, the, the one word where it is mentioned, the message board or the notice board should hide the identity of the donor yes. respecting their confidentiality. Both, I, I'm sure, even of the recipient the identity yeah that's better better we yeah can be uh, this thing so maybe one can uh, try and look at the websites of some hospitals and see how they are maintaining it so that can be a good learning so i think uh, is there any other hopefully i think uh, operation theater requirement uh, is it uh, modular or uh, men no there is no mention no mention sir yes, so people we insist on twin theater but there is no mention in that then uh, can a foreigner undergo for transplant transplantation with his or her foreign relative as donor yeah, the foreigners can they can undergo a transplant, but they should come through the authorization committee. Yes. Okay. So, is there any specification for transplant ICU? No. No, they have accepted scientific methods. That is uh, accepted scientific uh, protocols. So, with that um, term. Uh, I think uh, that encompasses all the twin theater and then their relevant ICU and all that. Mm -hmm. Should we ask the neurologist at the time of appointment to submit experience on transplantation if his experience certificate does not mention experience about transplantation separately? I think he's talking about nephrologist, not her. Yeah, I think three years experience is the one that is uh, mentioned in the act. Yeah. So post MD or post MS, all of us are uh, experienced by three years. So I think uh, it should bring us to the end of this 
wonderful session with Dr. Balaraman. We are extremely thankful to you, sir, so for taking your time out and uh, enlightening us and on, on a topic that I think, uh, uh, although everything is probably there in the act and all that, but we do not take efforts to go through all the fine prints. So off and on, it is important for us that we listen to somebody like you. So thank you very much and thank you all friends uh, for this great, great webinar session. Thank you, Dr. Balaram. Thank you, sir. And thank you, sir. I'd like to uh, uh, thank you once again for having given me this opportunity to interact with you and the friends. And then for again, my apologies for uh, uh, the, uh, I'm uh, being novice in the technology. And so I think I have troubled you enough. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.